Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, watching, hanging out, all that stuff. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing really well out there. I also hope that you and yours are staying safe and healthy. It's a weird time. We're all adjusting to it, but um, it has given me some time to edit some images and that sort of thing. And in addition to my um, isolation editing challenges, I've been doing a number of videos around that. I also want to continue doing videos around regular things that um, I think come into play and that are not isolation specific. They're not exercises or challenges. These are just day-to-day -day sort of tips, tricks, techniques, that sort of thing. So that's what I'm here to share with you today. I am in Luminar 4. Here's an image, and you've seen this image before if you've watched any of my old videos. This is not about how is Jim going to edit this image. This, uh, this video is specifically about contrast. I talk about contrast in a lot of my videos because I think it's an incredibly important aspect of your editing process, and that is the, uh, the amount of contrast, I think, plays a huge part in not just the light, but also in the color. And those are kind of, to me, the two things that you think about, um, or I think about, I should say, when I'm editing an image. It's light, it's color, and then it's also detail, but not going into detail here. However, uh, contrast, as I said, impacts not just light, but also color, and therefore I think that's why I think it's super important. I've also figured out that there's five ways in Luminar that I generally impact contrast, and then there's a couple of wild cards on top of that, um, three in fact. So let me jump into that. So this video is really all about contrast and how I manage or enhance that in Luminar. So let's get started. Um, the first one, of course, in the light tool is Smart Contrast. Very simple and straightforward slider, and you drag it to the right, and of course, it increases the contrast. Now, before we go too far, the thing I want to mention is contrast. I think of it as the difference between the bright parts and the dark parts of the photo. So, if I go the other way, you can see this is a very low contrast image, which is kind of a faded effect that's popular in some types of images. Nothing wrong with it. It's not something I particularly care for a whole lot, but um, typically, uh, people are adding a little bit of contrast because um, it. I think it just basically makes the image pop and it also makes your subject stand out a bit more as well. So here's a smart contrast application as the name implies. And by the way, I'm, this is not a deep dive on every tool that I'm going to use. I have countless videos about pretty much every one of these tools already. I just want to show you how com, uh, contrast impacts an image and the different tools I use to, to uh, create that impact. So smart contrast, very intelligent, I think does a great job. Here's something I, I think about when I add smart contrast. I will often, and by often I mean like 100% of the time, I will add uh, some adjustments to the highlights and shadows because that will further kind of refine the contrast in the image. So if you take a look here, messing with highlights and shadows further, I think, refines what Smart Contrast did, and I think it enhances it. I also may come in and play a little bit with whites and blacks. You can see I'm quickly impacting the image. Notice the colors look a little bit different as well. That's before and that's after, and honestly, I haven't done anything to the image in regards to color or any other enhancements. It's just smart contrast, highlight, shadows, whites, and blacks. And so very important, very powerful, and that's method number one. Let me hit reset, and while we're here in the light tool, the second way that I impact contrast is in the tone curve. Again, not a deep dive. The tone curve actually deserves its own video. If you'd like to see that, leave a comment down below. I've done that in the past, but I've been thinking about coming back and doing another video around it. On the tone curve, you have four different dots you can click, and these last three are specific to those color channels. So you want to stay on this gray or kind of white dot because that's impacting the overall tones in the image. The easiest way to impact contrast is to do what's called an S-curve, which is you place a, um, a point there and you can drag that up, and then you place a point here and you can drag that down. And that's, the, if you look at the curve, it's a little bit like the shape of an S, hence the name S-curve. But if you look at the before and the after with that S-curve, I have done nothing else to the photo. I reset everything I did up here, and all I have is the S-curve in the, uh, the tone curve applied. And what a difference, right? So that's massive. There's before and after. Now you can further refine that. I'm not going to get into that here, but I wanted to point that out as method number two. Very powerful, and in fact, the tone curve, I would argue, is the most powerful tool in any editing application. It's available in pretty much all the major apps, but here in Luminar, I think it, it, it stays the same as, you know, kind of the reigning champ, if you will, of power 
It's incredibly powerful. We'll dive into that in a future video, but that's the second way I impact contrast in an image. Okay, for the third one, I'm gonna pop over to the Professional tab and go to Advanced Contrast. And here you have the ability to impact contrast in the three major tonal areas of an image. So highlights, midtones, and shadows. You also have a balance slider that allows you to uh, air a little bit more in the direction of one or the other. So for this image, um, you know, honestly what I've done in the past is I just come in and experiment with how the contrast looks and then how the balance looks by making adjustments. So um, I'm generally just kind of experimenting. And as you can see here, I'm kind of figuring it out as I go. I think I like that look. And so let me show you the before and the after. Not quite as in, um, intense as an impact, but it gives you the ability and the power really to impact the contrast in these specific tonal areas. So lots of control over the image. I will sometimes use this in conjunction with smart contrast or tone curve to further refine what I've done to an image. But regardless, advanced contrast is very powerful and that's why that's method number three. Okay, while I'm here on the Pro tab, I'm just gonna drop down one and go to Adjustable Gradient. Now, this is a wonderful tool because you can set the orientation and move this up or down and tilt it and change the gradient zones. I'm just gonna leave it in the center for purposes of this video, but you'll notice you have expo or excuse me, you have contrast there. Well, you also do have exposure, which comes into play, by the way. Uh, but you have contrast. The other thing I like about using this tool for enhancing contrast is that you have sh uh, shadows and highlights which come into play, right? So uh, in this video, uh, excuse me, in this photo, keep in mind, I'm, I'm just on top. So I'm doing above that uh, orientation slider. I'm basically working on the area from this center line up, right? So I've added contrast, might take the shadows and the highlights down a little bit. That really looks great, I think, in the top of the image. I'm gonna do something similar in the bottom. Bump up the contrast pull down the shadows, it's gonna give me a little bit of darkness there, put on the highlights in here, I might actually pull down the exposure. Um, the other thing I like about this tool is that you have the warmth and the vibrance sliders, which really I think helps impact an image. And so I actually, um, yeah, maybe, maybe do a little bit of that, do a little bit of vibrance, and in the top, I think I'll cool it off a tiny bit, maybe give it a little bit of vibrance. I've made a major impact on this photo and really I'm just using one tool, adjustable gradient. So that's one of the reasons I think it's so powerful and why that's um, tool number four for impacting contrast. I'm gonna hit reset and we're gonna jump into number five, which is next, which is dodge and burn. So this one allows you to just paint in um, an increase in brightness or a decrease in brightness, like a dodging or a burning. Dodging is lightning, burning is darkening. So this tool gives you the ability to do, to do that. I think what I would do, I would come in here with strength of, I usually start pretty low, like 12 or 15. I might start a little bit higher, let's say 20. I'm on darken, and I'm just gonna come over here and get these rooftops and some of these buildings. And um, you know, I'm gonna do something like that. In fact, I'm gonna go a little bit higher. I'm gonna go 40 and see how that looks. And again, all I'm doing is painting in uh, a darkening effect, and to be clear, I'm just kind of hacking here in terms of my precision. I'm not trying to be specific or um, super precise with my brush here. I'm just making it really quick just for demonstration purposes. But I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna darken these areas. And again, contrast is the difference between darkness and light. And so I'm gonna come in here and add some darkness where I think it will help impact the contrast of the image. Notice I'm staying away from those white buildings. I wanna keep them pretty white, but otherwise I'm just kinda of coming in here and getting these rooftops and that sort of thing. And again, a sloppy job, we're all friends here. You know this is not about how to be a precise masking person um, with this tool. This is Jim just kinda of showing you how it operates. And um, you know, that's probably about it for that. Let me hit done, and let me show you the before and the after really way too dark. Now, if you've overdone it, you can come in here with the overall amount and pull that down, which I think is a great feature in the Dodge and Burn tool. I would probably come in and do more things. I would probably mess with the sky a little bit, and I would definitely mess with this foreground. In fact, I might just get a low opacity brush, maybe 15 or something, and I'm gonna stay on darken, and I'm gonna increase the size of that, and I'm just gonna darken this uh, walkway here a little bit just to give that a little bit more pop. 
Um, and you can just continue to go over and over uh, an object and just keep painting to slowly increase the amount. But there we go. Let me show you the before and the after. Not what I would exactly do. Um, and here's a point I would like to make, and that is I would generally use dodge and burn in combination with other tools. I might use it with advanced contrast or adjustable gradient or the tone curve back on the first tab in the light tool or even smart contrast, highlights and shadows. I generally don't use dodge and burn by itself, but rather in combination with other tools. Regardless, it's very powerful because it does allow you to change the brightness um, or the darkness. So in other words, impact the luminance of an image um, in specific areas by brushing it in and that's how you impact contrast. So that's why that's tool number five for me. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to the light tool and these are my wild cards. Those are the, the five I've already shared with you are the five that I think are the powerful contrast adjustment tools in Luminar. But now I'm gonna show you three more wild cards that I like to use depending on the image. And so generally uh, when I'm saying wild card, this would be something I would use to enhance the contrast after I've already managed contrast elsewhere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of smart contrast, pull down, the, pull down the highlights and the shadows a little bit and kind of get a base contrast image that I like. And now I'm gonna go into these wild cards. The first one is in color. Now in color, you have the ability to go in these advanced settings. So when you open color tool, it'll look like that. Click on advanced settings. In this case, I'm gonna take the blue and I'm gonna go impact the luminance of the blue. So in other words, I'm gonna darken the blue and look what that does to the image. I'm also gonna go into the red, maybe darken that by pulling down the luminance, maybe pull up the saturation, maybe even change the hue a little bit. I'm gonna go into the yellow, maybe pull up the luminance of the yellow and the orange maybe do the same thing. So not a massive impact, but these wild cards, to me, they help you kind of refine the contrast because all I'm doing is changing the luminance value of certain colors. Luminance is the brightness. So if I'm darkening certain colors, I'm impacting contrast. So let me show you. There's before using the color tool and after. Not a massive change, but it works well in combination with other things like what I did on the light tool to further refine the contrast. So that's why I'll often go into color, go into advanced settings and use the luminance values here to maybe pull those down or increase the luminance of certain colors to further refine the contrast in an image. Okay, the next wild card is over here on the creative tab and it's mystical. Um, I use this a lot. I left the uh, stuff that I did here in the light tool with smart contrast highlights and shadows. I left that because like I said, I want to make the base contrast edits before I go into my wild cards. And I don't call them wild cards. I just didn't know what to call them. They're further refinements or further enhancement tools that I like to use. But mystical is the next one. And so as you can see here, um, it does a great job of adding some of that what I call romantic moodiness or whatever. But basically, it also adds a little bit of contrast because it adds some shadow to the image. And so um, you can kind of go like that. You can increase the shadows if you want to. I will sometimes pull them down as well. Let me show you what this tool has done. There's before and there's after. It's kind of a mood enhancer for lack of a better word, but I think it does a great job of also impacting the contrast. That's why that is also a wild card for me. Okay, and my third and final wild card is the Orton effect, which I use often with Mystical or in place of Mystical. They're fairly similar, but yet a little bit different. I prefer type one Orton. And if you drag that to the right, you will see I'm getting a bit more contrast in my image. And so just doing that alone has increased contrast. There's before Orton and there's after Orton. It really does help to accentuate the mood and sort of pop the colors as well. And keep in mind, I've not done anything with color. I did a little bit of contrast adjustment, highlights and shadows in the light tool, and now I'm just impacting the rest of it with Orton. You've also got a brightness here, so if you wanna bring that up a little bit, and you have a contrast slider here. So if you wanna deepen the contrast a little bit, you can do that. In addition to saturation, which will help you further impact colors, on an image like this, I don't really need to do much with color. I think it's fairly colorful already, especially considering where we started, right? There's a before and after that's impacting contrast, uh, highlights and shadows on the light tool, and then just adding Orton. So I'm really not doing a lot to an image, but there it is before Orton and after Orton. And that's why Orton is my third kind of wild card or mood enhancer for contrast. So if you take the base image, using just two tools, smart contrast, highlights and shadows in the light tool, and then Orton effect here, 
I've got an image that, frankly, I really like. I think it looks great. And so that's why I like to use that one as a mood enhancer. And that's really it, my friends. I wanted to walk through the five ways that I impact contrast in, in, in an image, plus three additional wildcard tools that I use to further enhance the mood and impact contrast. That's how I do it. There's so many things you can do in Luminar. It's super powerful. It's super fun. And of course, um, you can make beautiful images using it. So that was a sort of a tutorial, if you will, on contrast. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks for watching, my friends. Hope you're doing great out there. Staying safe, staying healthy. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you really soon. Have a great day. Take care, my friends, and adios.